Podcasting from the one and only planet Earth, it's I Heart This. In a world that seems determined to call out what's wrong, we remember what's right, what's beautiful, what's good. I'm Ben Lord. Let's talk about what we love. I want to talk about the blue sky. But to do that, I think it's helpful to talk about Mars first. For more than 40 years now, human beings have been sending robots with cameras to Mars, and the pictures they send back are so awesomely cool. These robots give us a chance to see how Mars looks, not from an orbit in nearby space, but from the perspective you'd have if you were literally shuffling through the dust and clambering over the rocks on another world. A world so far away that it can take up to 20 minutes to send a radio signal back to Earth just to say hello. Those pictures are ruggedly beautiful, like the rocky landscapes of southern Utah. As cool as that picture is, there's one thing that I must admit I find a little disappointing. Mars's sickly yellow sky, like a L.A. smog from before the Clean Air Act. Okay, uh, there are lots of reasons not to live on Mars. A bombardment of shortwave radiation from the sun that would basically guarantee cancer. No water, no forests, the dinner parties suck, and there is nowhere on the entire planet to get a good bagel. It is freezing cold, and you can't breathe the atmosphere. But even with all those things, like if you fixed all that, I'd still miss the blue sky. I'm not a person who often gets sentimental about color. People ask me what my favorite color is, and I blank stupidly for a minute, thinking, oh, crap. I mean, colors are just different wavelengths of light. For me, it's kind of like asking, which do you like better, middle C or F sharp? I've never understood how it's possible for colors to clash or why someone would feel disgust for a certain shade of orange but want to paint their bedroom a slightly different shade. But I can tell you that even for someone as aesthetically challenged as myself, I find the blue of Earth's sky almost heartbreakingly beautiful. It's an easy thing to take for granted. After all, the sky is blue every day, and it's easy to forget how miraculous it is. There is no guarantee that your planet's sky will be blue. Mars's isn't. Venus's isn't. The moon doesn't even have a sky. Even during its long day, moonlings must look off into the blackness of space. What makes us so lucky? It's a classic childhood curiosity question that most of us grown-ups get too busy to ask ourselves. But here's an amazing fact. We actually know. Human beings can tell you why the sky is blue. We figured it out because we're awesome. It turns out our sky is blue because the gases in our atmosphere, while they are transparent to most of the colors that we can see, just happen to scatter a few very particular wavelengths of sunlight bouncing them back and forth to each other like some giant atmospheric pinball machine. And all the rest of the colors just happen to go right through. There's no rule that it has to be this way. The gases might have absorbed that blueness like they do with x-rays or reflected them like the gases on Neptune and Uranus. The truth is, we're just lucky. We just happen to have this fortuitous mix of nitrogen and oxygen perfectly tuned to scattering this particularly fabulous color. And it hasn't always been this way. Earth's sky wasn't always blue. The cocktail of gases that make up our atmosphere is changing all the time. This is a fact we should know. After all, right now, we are the force most responsible for changing it by adding massive amounts of carbon dioxide, which, by the way, is changing the color of our atmosphere just in parts of the spectrum beyond what we can see. Anyway, I digress. The point is that the constituent gases of Earth's atmosphere have changed over 4.8 billion years. And there was once a time when there wouldn't have been enough oxygen, even on Earth, for a blue sky. And there might never have been enough oxygen, ever, to get that marvelous blue. 
if it weren't for one little thing. Microscopic, actually. A cyanobacterium that, as a result of some twist of evolution, started burping out oxygen as a byproduct of a new chemical pathway it had just accidentally evolved. This, of course, was photosynthesis. This was a staggering event on many levels, not the least of which was that oxygen was a deadly poison to nearly everything that lived on Earth at the time, and basically signaled an Armageddon-like mass extinction for the rest of life on Earth. It caused a massive worldwide rusting of the oceans, it paved the way for organisms like you and I that can't survive even a few minutes without bathing every cell in oxygen. And it turned our sky blue. Earth's sky is blue because of life and because of one happy accident after another. Mars might be fun to visit, but there really is no place like home, not even in a universe as vast as ours. That blue sky gets me every time. I Heart This is written, edited, and produced by me, Ben Lord. You can find more things to love at our website, iheartthispodcast.com. Thank you so much for listening. Be kind, be curious, and be thankful.